learned already that names don't constitute knowledge. It's the knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro and Patreon.com slash BKC. Bare knuckle charting. Okay. Um, I've been posting a lot of these um, charts lately uh, for free. And, um, you know, it, it all starts with price action. Forget about uh, Fibonacci's, candlesticks, RSI's, moving averages, whatever the fuck. If you can't read a chart, then you have no business calling yourself a technical analyst. Okay. So, you know, why, why is that? Well, it's very simple that when you start adding anything to price, okay, beyond, you know, reading it, the, the, the lines, uh, all it's going to do is give you a false sense of security. Um, you, you're going to start seeing pie in the sky. You, you, you'll be making excuses. Ah, you know, the RSI yeah, and the MACD was, yeah, okay, I didn't see that. And uh, and, and what you'll do is, uh, especially when other guys and gals are showing it to you, uh, making you believe that this is the way you read technical analysis with, you know, RSIs and MACDs and whatever the fuck, uh, you're always going to be chasing your, ch your tail, okay? And that is the point of BKC, bare knuckle charting, okay? So... Um, Early on, when this happened, I said the biggest risk to the economy and to the markets is this structure right here, okay? At the time, we didn't have enough of a hook. We did get it uh, the next day when I first started posting it, okay? So what, what, what happens is you need four points. You need three waves, and you never know when a wave is going to end. You need four points, three waves uh, to create a valid structure, and the third wave has to hook. It has to come down sufficiently enough uh, to to validate this as, as a point. All right. Now this one is on the cusp of being acceptable. Okay. But nonetheless, uh, I did deem it okay, good enough. And then what happened? Well, we got that one more up. Okay. We got that nice move back up. But but something as insignificant as this little red dot right there. Did not make it all the way up to the trend line. Now, what does that indicate? Okay, it indicates that the the thrust, the speed, is insufficient to meet the trend line. Okay, there were not enough buyers to push it all the way up to touch the trend line that it created. First, it has to create it, right? Uh, the, the, the trend line to be valid. The structure to be valid, got to have the three waves with the hook, right? So um, it doesn't mean you can't go higher. It's just the first indication that, you know, there's a little bit of weakness there. And then what ended up happening? Well, it went sideways, okay? It tried to push up higher. Guess what? It created a bigger weakness right in here, all right? Came back down, went sideways, and then eventually it gave out. And this is why I say that if you are going to call yourself a technical analyst and you really do understand how to read a chart, you will start to notice these small subtleties. That these are all the subtleties th that you require um, to start seeing 
where the good risk reward trades are. So for example, if you're trying to trade somewhere here, you see this big drop and you're like, oh, because it's what everybody does. <laughs> they wait for the market to go down or up and then they all write in and, and pile in, right? So you look at this and, and then he's like, oh, I'm shorting. And then you eat this, you, you eat it, you eat this move, you're done. You've blown out your account, okay? Because then you're going to get this and then you're going to get this. And guess what? You're finished. Game over. Thank you for playing. Bye-bye account. All right. Now, I don't want to mislead anybody. This, uh, this seems as easy, but to do it in real time, it's not that easy. Okay. Um, so you got to spend time on it. You got to, you know, train your eyes to see these things and you have to train your, 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 your eyes to do this in real time. Okay. Now, obviously charting in of itself is not enough. You, you got to understand the macroeconomics behind it all. And then you take the two, the two, and contrast it and see what the best risk reward is what the likely next move will be now this move was what what happened here did did the macroeconomics change nope <laughs> did the uh the company start making money all of a sudden and everybody's running out to buy it nope uh so what, what what's happening here well brexit was coming in they, they had the china talks they had all this stuff now what the market does in these situations, and remember, it's not necessarily buying. It's a lack of selling that can cause something like this. Okay. Um, what what the market is trying to do is apply the maximum amount of pain to the maximum amount of people. And the way to do that is in this particular case is to push prices higher. Why? One, it's going to squeeze the shorts. Okay, it's going to make it so expensive for the shorts to, to hold on to it that they're going to cough it up, puke it up, actually. Two, a year of bull, well, it's going to make it as expensive as possible for you to buy it, all right? And that was the whole point of this whole entire move. And that's why I posted, and if you saw it on my Twitter, you got to be the last man standing, Okay. And to what, what does that mean to be the last man standing? Your position has to be small enough to be able to absorb a fuckery move. Okay. If you go out and you bet the farm and you think you know what the hell is going on, especially in this sideways market, you're really going to hurt yourself. Okay. Nothing will ever make sense to you. You're, you're going to be puking it up because you oversized. You can't hold on. Uh, you're going to start getting emotional and reactionary and buying, selling, selling, buying, and, and you're done. You're finished. And that's why it's so important that you size appropriately and you take the good risk reward uh, trade because it's going to allow you to be able to hold on to positions. And then you got to make sure that that position is going to is you're going to be the last man standing all the way up here when everybody else is puking it up and then comes the correction. Okay, then comes the correction. And when the correction comes, one of three things are going to happen. One, you're going to mitigate your losses if you fucked up and it does happen. Two, at least break even, make your money back. Three, you're going to make a profit. Okay, so you got to be the last man standing. So whenever you're putting on a position, you got to you got to think about that. Now, if the structure starts to break out and starts to look something like this, okay, and and this is it's going what what I call incredibly bullish or incredibly if it's coming down like this, incredibly bearish, then in that case you got to stop out. All right. Um but most of the time, what the market is going to do is, and this is not Elliott Wave or stupid shit like that. It's, it has nothing A, B, C, and Z, D, X, W. Forget about that. It has nothing to do with it. The market moves in threes. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. That, that's what the market does. And then these waves create these structures. And then the structures usually, when they point one way, they're going to do the next. Then the next move is going to be this way. And then you're going to have a structure that's going to go like this, and then it's going to do this. Okay. 
So not only do you have to deal with the one, two, three, then you have to deal with the structures falling apart and they're going this way. And then, and then this is why, you know, when you use these RSIs and all this nonsense and all this stuff, it never makes sense to anybody. Uh, and with each indicator that you add on to a chart, it's just another reason for you to say, oh, I didn't see this. Oh, I didn't see that either. Oh, I didn't see this. Just excuses. That's all it ends up being. If you're right, you're right because you're a fifter. What is a fifter? Uh, somebody that had a 50-50 chance of being right. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. But you're going to fool yourself into thinking that this works. Okay? And that's what's so hard about teaching, like, real technical analysis and real macroeconomics. It's hard because the market will do irrational things. And when it does do these irrational things, people make up stories in their head and they run out and they start believing them and they start guessing what Brexit is going to happen, if it's not going to happen, what's the pound doing, what is that doing? And, and, and you're making up stories in your head. That's what you're doing. But you don't know it. Why? Because you've never seen the right way to do it. So you gotta you gotta make sure that what you are learning is factually correct. All right. Now, is this a hundred percent? Nothing is a hundred percent. This could have easily done something like this and taken off. Done. This is finished. Okay. The whole trade is done. This whole thing that I was talking about all over Twitter and Facebook and everywhere would have been done. Oop, I'm wrong. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. What's what's wrong with being wrong is staying wrong. Okay. You don't want to stay wrong. It's okay to fuck up. Everybody fucks up. 30% of the time you're going to be making a mistake. Sometimes more. You can, you can go months of being 70% wrong. Okay. But that 30% is going to be enough to keep you in the game and balance, maybe, maybe making, losing a little bit, right? That's what it's all about. So think about that. Think about what I'm telling you, all right? This is a 7% move. This is huge, huge in such a short period of time uh, in an index. Just think from the third till, and, and actually, if, if you want to get technical, from the 10th all the way to the 17th, a little over a week, this thing soared, right? Uh, but nonetheless, it did create the structure that we could uh, trade against. So, what are we looking for this week? Now, here's the catcher. When you have a one, two, three up, you have a valid structure. Everything looks great. It's starting to weaken here and then here, and then it starts to come down. And early indications show that this is probably going to open up lower tomorrow and whatever. Once you're within this structure, okay, your bias until it breaks is to the upside. I know. I know. I have an arrow pointing down because eventually this will break, okay? But the bias is always to the upside. Now, wh why do I have this? Okay, because this is a previous lows or highs are potential areas of reversal. And if I zoom out here, a little bit what you're going to see is that this high and this high right this line right here right was a potential area of reversal and what happened market came up tagged it boom down all right uh you want to call it a double top you want to I, I don't care what you call it but i'm just telling you what usually happens so this is why this area here along with this support area tomorrow okay it could come down here break this low tag this uh, rising uh, trend line within the structure okay and bounce that's possible or it can just go right through it and goodbye the next area will be down here which would be about 75 60 and then the one after that is all the way down here that means the whole structure will break all right now if it crosses the line Oh, he crossed the line. No, no, no. You know who comes up with this stuff? Oh, he crossed the line. Support and resistance, guys. Guys that think that, oh, look, the price action is going like this. It's support. Oh, he broke the line. It's going lower. 
It goes like this, and then boom, straight up. <laughs> and you're sitting there holding the bag of shit. It's not the way it works, okay? It's not the way it works. A break of the line doesn't need a whole hell of a lot, right? Because they could start doing this, which what we call a structure below a structure, and then eventually it will start to break down. Alternatively, you can do something like this as well, okay? And then that would start to break down. And then it will go into a thrust move. Uh, now, the way you count the waves, there's a certain there's a certain way you do it, but we're not going to get into that now. If you guys want to learn that, you can come down to patreon.com slash real macro. It's right here. And you can uh, understand how to start to count waves properly in the right way. All right. So for this week, uh, we're looking for a little bit of more uh, further downside. But as long as it's within the structure, look for the move to, to bounce. Okay. Especially in this area. There's two, two areas that are key that possibly are going to give you uh, a push up. Now, uh, if something happens, it's news driven, whatever, and everything is great and it gaps up, well, you know, the next area is going to be somewhere up here, 8,000 plus. All right. So uh, understanding what, what the possibilities are is important because you'll know how to manage it before it happens. Right. So anyway, uh, this is a key area of reversal, and if it bounces, this up here would be uh, a key area of uh, resistance. Great Britain Pound. I, I posted this early on, right, when it started going up. Uh, this is the structure, one, two, three down. You can see it, right? And I said, this is going to break to the upside. All right. Now, if you go back on my Twitter, you're going to see right here, every single time that you think you're going to cost average short, buy. Do the complete opposite, buy. And I said that on Twitter. Why? Because once something like this starts to thrust up, okay, it's not going to give you a chance to get in. And every time it's not going to give you a, a chance to get in, you're going to say, ah, a little bit it moves to the downside. Ah, now it's going gonna, it's gonna to reverse. Ah, now it's going to reverse. Ah, it's too high. Now it's going to reverse. And before you know it, your account is blown. I've done it a million times, believe me. I know. I know exactly what you're doing. So uh, you should have listened to me. <laughs> I hope you did. <laughs> Always buy. Now, we got the breakout. All right? We got the breakout. What happens? Well, look at it. It's a one, two, three up, right? So it can literally come all the way down back to 2550. As long as it remains above this trend line, um, then you want to take it to the, to, to the long side. All right? And this can continue all the way up to 133 plus. That's the previous high. Okay, find some resistance there and so forth. But remember, you need you need to be aware of this trend line here. Okay, because uh, judging by the data, this is going to start coming back down tomorrow, and then it'll do something like this, or like this. Shit, something like this. And this would be a structure above a structure, and then the next move is going to be up. Okay, so um, just uh, food for thought. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about gold. Uh, you had the big thrust down, okay, and then it started to correct, broke down, creating a structure below a structure. This is what I was talking about before, and then we're going to look for more for the downside. Now, um, again, you're going to see that you had uh, one, two, three. It's complete, right? It hooked over, so this is the structure. This is usually something that's going to resolve to the downside. Um, so, again, it's difficult to to talk about the way I do charting because it's completely unique. Uh, of course, obviously, other people are doing waves and so forth, but it's unique in the way I, I approach it. And and you show it to people, and they're saying like, "What? Well, where's the RSI? Where's the candlestick? What? what do you, where's the ABC element of P?" So it's it's difficult, but anyway, I'll do it for a little bit uh, longer, uh, as I think it's important to do it now, uh, and then I'll go back to uh, my little uh, Patreon page and do what I got to do with my my peeps. So that's it. Uh, that's what we're looking for this week. Um, again, learn how to read a chart and. Uh, We'll talk again soon. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.
before this battle's over, the world will know that few stood against many.